Hi everybody, this is Joe of My My Mods coming to you with a graphics card water block installation today. I wanted to show you how easy it is to actually put a water block on a graphics card. A lot of people think that it's going to be some difficult task or you're going to break it or what have you. And most of the manufacturers now, as long as you put the stock cooler back on the graphics card, they honor the warranty. So there's nothing really to worry about there. And a lot of people, it's the thermal compound that's the problem. Like you might use like Arctic Silver 5, which I'm gonna use as a conductive thermal compound, which you, no problem at all. Um, and if it ends up going over the edge or what have you, you, just take it apart, clean it, it goes right back together again. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. All right, so the first step in doing graphics card water block installation is you got to remove this stock cooler which is pretty straightforward the screw here here and here need to be removed off the bracket and then all the black screws that you see back here all need to come right off now just make sure that you don't lose any of these screws. You won't need them for the water block installation, but you're gonna to wanna to keep this, the stock cooler, and the box, and any thermal pads that you can get off once, you'll, you'll see them once we get going. But the reason why is all the manufacturers, or a lot of them, I should say, honor the warranty so if something happens to it after you put the water block on it and say a few months goes down the road and the card's acting up you can put the stock cooler back on and they'll honor their warranty as long as you install it as the way that you found it as you saw i went through and took all, all the exterior screws first just the way that i do it and then i go at it in the interior just like when we install it back on you want to go to the interior where the, where the actual chip is you know evenly screw it on and then do the out the outside it's just the opposite once we put the block on all right so now that you have all your screws out just pretty much Put one hand on the cooler, one hand on the board, and then it should just come right apart, just like that. And then there'll be a few wires. One of them is to control the fan, and on this cooler, the other one controls the light. And those just pop right out. Give it a little wiggle. A little wiggle on this one. So there you have this board now this one's still considered a non or a reference design even though it has this like aluminum heat sink over the vrms and pc in the in the um in the memory but this also just just pries right off just like that so you save this piece you save that piece the screws put it all back together as you saw to honor it for the warranty no no problem all right, so now since we have the cooler off, now you wanna clean all the chips that need to get cooled and get the old residue off an old thermal compound. So we gotta get that thermal compound off of here and then these memory chips we need to clean off. And then these are the VRMs right here, these little square guys. You gotta clean those off as well. So anything that you saw on this cooler, you just gotta, anything that had a thermal pad on it is the same things that you wanna clean with a solution. Now the solution that we use is the Arctic Silver Clean, the Arctic Clean part one and two. This will remove dry thermal compounds. If you have a graphics card you've been using for a while and it's real dry, this will get that right off. And then this purifies the surface. Now I like to wipe off thermal compound that's on the die with just the paper towel first to get most of it off and then grab your part one here put a little bit in the paper towel and then wipe that die 
don't gotta go crazy. Grab these chips. Don't you don't gotta go crazy on it. Just, just get it. And right here, that's why you want to use a Q-tip over a paper towel if you can. If not, you only got a paper towel, but you got some canned air. Pull it right off. All right. So now since the cleaner's on there, you gotta get that cleaner off. Because if you don't, thermal pads and compound don't stay on or good for very long. So same process with this. Can't dare, good idea. But as you can see now, our card is all clean and ready for installation of the new thermal compound and pads before we install the water block. So now we need to get the thermal pads and thermal compound onto the card in replacement to where the old stuff was. So with the aqua computer blocks, they are a little bit different than most other manufacturers that, that supply pads. Most of them give you pads for the VRMs and the memory. Aqua computer, they go above and beyond and make it so you actually use thermal compound on the chips. It's supposed to give you better performance that way over the, over the thermal pad. Um, so we're gonna get these thermal pads on first before we put the compound on. Um, that's pretty easy. Um, and make sure you read the manual because the manuals like Aqua Computer, they color code everything, tell you that the green's the thermal pads, the red's thermal compound, and then when you get to tightening it down, you know, what's what. So like I said, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Just, just gotta read it based on which brand block that you buy. So we know that we need to cover these chips here. Let's mark it with my fingernail so I know where to cut. And then there's a protective coating on both sides of this pad. Flipping it around because I think this side, some, sometimes some brands are a little tackier than the other on one side versus the other. So that's the pads that need to be put in place. Now I'm going to put the thermal compound on. It tells me not to use electrically conductive thermal compound for the fact of if you were to put it on and it was to ooze off the side and hit these pieces of metal around here, or if it was to ooze off the side and hit these pieces right here, it's going to end up shorting out. But if it shorts out, because I like Arctic Silver 5, if it ends up shorting out, you can simply just take it off, wipe it away, and put it back together again. And typically, it turns right on. Um, and a lot of people putting the thermal compound on, I just use my finger. We do carry these metal applicators you saw me using to scrape the thermal compound. You can also use it to evenly put on which I'm gonna try this for this video. I always use my finger. Um, or you carry these little rubber finger grommets per se that you can put over your finger, smear it on, and then peel off so you don't have any of the residue left behind. I like to do a very thin X. Don't need a lot of compound. So with the X, I'm going to do the GPU with my finger. I just like to evenly just go back and forth. Now, once again, people get mad. Oh, it oils your finger, this and that. It's not going to make that much of a difference, guys. Come on now. So there you go. There's your GPU. Very, very thin. When you put your, con when you put your block over and compresses the compound down, you know that it's making even contact and the whole chip surface is covered. And you know that you didn't overuse it if you're trying to use a conductive thermal compound and it's gonna go around and, and short out. I'm gonna put a line
All right, so I went and evenly got the thermal compound across all those chips. Like I said, that tool worked really good because it's the same um, size as these memory chips. So obviously on the graphics card die, it would it'd work just as well. So now, the tricky part. Holding this water block and putting it on here and getting some screws screwed in and not trying to mess up the actual compound. All right, so now we have the holes over the block. And you don't gotta worry about it coming apart anymore. So now, you, now you're good, now you can work on it freely. And now, once again, this has these two rubber strips that they want you to put over this line here. So that's what it tells us to do. And then <clears throat> the longer screws with these washers, are what's next? Well, the foam is higher than the washer. So they really want you to compress that foam down. So I'm gonna get just these screws in so I know that they're in and through the standoff. Now this seems like a tricky one. It doesn't look like you can just screw it down or it's gonna wave back and forth. So that's why I put this piece of foam, other foam underneath it. I'm gonna hold, press it down to compress that foam a little bit and then screw in. Try and grab some thread here. Which grabbing thread is, was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. All right, one thing you got to remember, we had to cut out because I installed this bracket here, which is for if you're only going to be doing just the water block. Now, we're actually going to be installing the back plate. I just want to show you this real quick. Pretty cool back plate from Aqua Computer that we actually had engraved by one of our good friends. Um, that's actually making things with stuff. So he does a lot of CNC work, woodworking, whatever. So, but when you're using a back plate, you wanna read that manual almost first before the other one to make sure that there isn't other screws that you have to take out. Cause you end up doing a bunch of work that you don't even need to do. So with this one found out, that all you need is put that screw back in for the bracket, PCI bracket, and then the four screws around the gra the GPU die, and then this one off to the side. So I'm gonna, I only have them um, in here very loose. So you're gonna wanna counterclockwise tighten them as tight as, well, they go. Hand tight. Okay. So now that's on there. Now to get the back plate on, flip it over. Well, the way that you know it's gonna go on. And then it comes with a bunch of these big plastic O-rings, or standoffs, I should say. And you put them in, they got these like little notches that you just push them in. And now, so like we put the block on the card, you gotta do the opposite. You gotta now hold this like it was the water block. And now you gotta just put it over so you know that those holes are lining up. All right. Flip it over. So now those standoffs won't fall out if they aren't secure. And then they get provide these screws. I just lightly, lightly put those in there. Now I'm gonna go and actually tighten them down. So make sure that you don't over tighten these very gently on the back plate. Again, you don't need a wrench for this or anything. Just hold your finger on the nut. 
tighten it. If you're using your wrench, you're doing it wrong. So that's almost done. We got that one last one up here. And then this cooler oh, is actually their active cooling unit. In their active cooling unit, you actually exchange this piece out right here with the inlet and outlet that's already on the block and it adds this heat pipe here into the back plate. So then technically your back plate, like the heat from the back plate is being water cooled with this heat pipe. So if you just had the regular aqua computer back plate that didn't have that, installation's done. This, this is done product. But with this one, just one extra step of just taking out these two, um, or three I should say, three hex screws. You need to reuse those screws. So don't fling them off to the side. Also, those O-rings that are on the block, you need to, they came out of here. You need to take them off gently and place them into the new one. Put our screws back in. These ones, you want to make sure they're tight. So you want that O-ring to be tight. Now that presses down by itself. It's just there is a heat pipe making contact. And then it comes with just this little vanity plate. All right, guys, and there you have it. Graphics card water block installed with backplate and custom backplate. All right, guys, that wraps it up for the water block installation on the EVGA card. So we're gonna do try and do more of these tutorial installation videos for you. So just stay tuned. Thanks again from on my mods.